Throughout history, there have been countless unexplainable stories, events, and moments captured on audio. These horrifying tapes were archived, never to be heard again. Until now. These are the tapes of trepidation. Tape number 11, Fallout 4, Mannequins. I've always been quite a fan of scary games. I've played Cry of Fear, Outlast, Resident Evil, the list goes on. I've always craved a hair-raising experience in games. Something that makes me feel on edge and gets my blood pumping. But it always felt like something was missing. I felt like I wanted some freedom in these scary environments. Where I wasn't constricted to follow a straight line path toward the end. I wanted something where I could get my fill of horror and be able to do whatever I wanted. This is where Fallout 4 comes in. I've been a fan of the Fallout series and Fallout 4 was something I could eat up hours upon hours with. Not just off the base game, but with its modding community. This was, for a while, a go-to game for me to play. For a while are the key words here, as I inevitably let the game collect dust in my Steam library in favor of playing other games. Recently, though, I felt an urge to replay the game. As some people have been saying, the modding community in the last few months has done some rather amazing things, and I have to agree with them. Immersive graphics, tactical and badass weaponry, and the thing that made my spark from wanting to replay the game into an inferno, horror mods. There were mods such as Grim, Pilgrim, and Whispering Hills the last of which I downloaded in a heartbeat. Mods that made the boss and Commonwealth feel less like a nuclear apocalypse and more akin to a ghastly hellscape full of abominations. I snagged the previously mentioned mods, a few armor and weapon mods, and one that caught my eye for a quirky little name, Creepy Mannequins. All the mod did was place the base game mannequin textures with some creepier looking ones with stitched scars running down their chest and smiles etched across their faces. I thought it would be a fun little detail to spice up some of the base game location using mannequins, such as the Museum of Witchcraft. Once everything was in order, I started a new save file. Usually, I dread the long and monotonous pre-war introduction of the game but it was easier to bear knowing the goodies lying ahead. After creating my character and laying out my special points, I followed the game as I raced out to the vault, getting frozen, watching Nora get shot in the face, waking up to the rad roaches, and finally collecting my Pip-Boy. I ascended out of the vault and was greeted by a faded wash of sunlight behind a thick film of fog that draped the land. Not the Commonwealth I remembered. I ran to Sanctuary to see if it was affected by the mods, only stopping to cheat myself into some weapons and armor I downloaded. I didn't care about a legitimate run. I just wanted to have fun playing. Helping Codsworth clear Sanctuary, I got my first little taste of the creepy mannequins. A red-vested one simply standing in the garage of what used to be my character's house staring out with grey, sketched-on eyes and that hellishly wide smile. It was a little quirk that fit the fog-trenched environment nicely. After I was done in Sanctuary, I didn't head straight for the Minutemen in Concord. Rather, I started exploring around the north end of the map. 
I fought rust devils at the sidelight array in the beam of my pit boy's light and followed the sneaking tracks of Bedford Station's railway. I wanted to see if I would encounter any new creatures or places in the wooded areas in this part of the map. And I found one of the two. To the east side of the Commonwealth, huddled away near a destroyed overpass and train tracks, a bunker stood nestled in a little crook in the terrain. It had no windows, and its door was locked by a terminal. The terminal itself was locked with a password required prompt, but I had no question or anything, so I simply used the unlock command on the bunker and entered. It was small on the inside, with only some broken computers, a soldier skeleton draped over a worn out mattress, and a trunk with a fusion core inside with some 10mm ammo and a few caps. What intrigued me the most was another terminal door at the opposite end of the cramped little bunker. This one wasn't locked, nor did it have to be hacked open. There were two options, a log entry titled Specimen Report, and the other was an option to unlock the security door. Curious, I clicked the Specimen Report. This thing has gone utterly mad. It bangs on the door day and night. It only shuts up when I yell at it from my bed. I don't know how much longer they want me to keep this damn thing in here. There's no point in even keeping it in captivity. All I want to do is take this thing in for- The log ended there. Presumably, this was when the bombs went off. Or maybe... Something happened with whatever was behind the door. I navigated back to the main window of the terminal and opened the security gate. I pulled my character's shotgun out as the door swung open to reveal... A mannequin. This one didn't have the usual red vest. It was naked like some of the ones you find laying around at raider camps. It had the same sketched-on eyes and needle-like toothy grin that stretched from one cheek to the other. A long scar which looked stapled shut ran down from the side of its neck to its stomach. I thought it was funny. Either something from the base game I had never noticed before, or something the mod added as a gag. Seeing that there wasn't anything else left in the bunker, I turned to head back to the door. As I was about three steps from the door, my character took damage. I stopped thinking I had stepped on a bear trap or something but there was nothing there. I looked around. Maybe there was an enemy, a surprise fail gruel or something? But no, there was nothing. Nothing but that mannequin in that little room standing there. I thought it was weird, but I had just exited the bunker, continuing my exploration of the foggy map. Just to the south, there was a truck trailer inhabited by some raiders and a turret. The first charged at me with a bladed tire iron, yelling out the usual, You're mine now, rookie! He didn't last long, and neither did the turret. Blasted away by my modern weapon, Scar H. I walked around to the back of the trailer, dispatching another raider as I entered the rear of the derelict vehicle. Inside were two mattresses, a chem box, and a suitcase with some caps and ammunition. I got shot as I was looking, and turned to see a raider survivalist taking shots at me. I raised my character's weapon again. But as I did, the raider turned to the right, beginning to fire at something outside. I hesitated to kill him, wanting to know what they were shooting at. So I stepped out. The raider still not paying any interest as he blasted at a mannequin lying lopsided on the road. I was confused. The mannequin had no enemy icon on the compass and wasn't even able to be interacted with. After a few more shots from the raider, the head popped off the mannequin and almost immediately he swung back to fire at me. I put him down quickly. 
I wasn't sure if the mod did more than just change mannequin textures. I pulled up the Nexus page on my phone while I continued my trek across the wasteland. The mod page just said it replaced the vanilla textures to add a little more spookiness to the game. Maybe this was another mod? I didn't think Whispering Hills added this amongst its editions of fog, vents, and quests. I didn't find anything notable along the way. Just a few mongrels at abandoned shacks, a feral ghoul, and a few more of those mannequins standing around the roads. My brain couldn't help but think that they were set up to watch me. I stopped at Abernathy Farm, which seemed mostly normal. The sun was setting as I entered the home. Blake Abernathy gave me the whole, we don't want any trouble dialogue. I had told him I didn't mean any trouble and he started talking about how raiders took his daughter's life and then their family locket. He was explaining how it was almost like a part of his daughter, when he suddenly stopped his dialogue, pulling his pipe pistol out and rushing outside, screaming, Found you! I followed him, only to be greeted by several mannequins standing in the field. He was shooting at one over and over, dumping magazine after magazine into it. After about a solid 15 seconds of this, Blake swung at it with his pistol for a melee attack. Upon doing this, Blake immediately dropped dead with a grunt, his right leg blowing off in a bloody mess. I approached his body, confused at the events that had transpired. That's when I took more damage. A whole third of my health sliced away as my character let out a pain <sighs> gasp. I looked up from Blake's body. The mannequin before him stood there with a sinister grin. This time, it was wearing Blake's outfit. I took a step back, equipping the Scar H once more, and unloaded into the mannequin. I sent it toppling down into the tato crops of the field. It didn't move when it was on the ground, and none of the other mannequins in the field moved. This had to be the work of the mod. Pot in the game, I checked the page, scrolling through some of the posts by users. Someone else must have asked about these strange happenings. There was nothing of the sort. Maybe it was another mod I downloaded without realizing it. Or an update to Whispering Hills? That mod only had mannequins that stood still until approached, in which they would start moving an attack with a weapon. They had different models and seemed to only spawn in one area of the mod's quest. These mannequins had no animations. They simply stood and didn't move. Curious yet utterly confused, I unpaused the game. Nothing changed. There were still the six mannequins standing in the field, and the one with Blake's outfit still lying on its side in the crops. I had no answers for what happened. The console didn't list the mannequins as an NPC. I felt a sinking feeling. I didn't want to be on that damn farm anymore. I opened my pit boy to fast travel back to Sanctuary, but was told I was unable to as there were enemies nearby. There wasn't anything though. I crouched and there wasn't a danger or caution icon. Only the one reading detected. Thinking I could draw it out, I fired one shot into the air and it went to caution. Perhaps there was something nearby. I fired again and to the north, a red blip appeared on my compass. All right, another random encounter. I took a step in the direction of the blip and was met with a loud snap. The camera flashed a third person view as the screen blurred and my character fell in a ragdoll to the ground, his arms and legs rolling off his body in a bloody death animation. What struck me deeper than seeing my character suddenly die was the figure standing behind my character's body. The mannequin wearing Blake's clothing had stood 
up again. It stood there behind my body, staring ahead at it. I could see the legs of the other mannequins beside it. They all looked to be facing my body. Does anyone else have any experience with this mod? Has anyone else taken damage, had NPCs killed by these mannequins, or even died in the game from them? Is this more than just a texture package as the mod suggests? I want to know. And I sure hope it's just the mod. This has been tape number 11, Fallout 4, Mannequins, by the Tapes of Trepidation Horror Narration Podcast. This story was written by Reddit user IcyLizard4707 and was originally posted on the Creepypasta subreddit, narrated with written permission from the author. Music featured in this episode was by Thrill with a link to their fantastic YouTube channel in the show notes. Narration production and sound design was by TJ Hodder. The tape's trepidation theme was written by the incredible J.M. Scherf. All logos, banners, overlays, and graphic design work was provided by the very talented Jason Reese from Jaybird Digital Arts. If you have a story you would like to submit or a question regarding the show, please contact us at tapestrepidationpodcast at gmail.com. Want to support the show? Check us out on social media through the link tree in the show notes. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. We have a lot of fun over on Discord. So come check it out. If you'd like to support the show a little more, receive access to monthly bonus narrations and the -the behind-the-scenes podcast within the archives in which I do a deep dive into what went into making each episode, consider joining the Tape of Trepidation Patreon at the tier that best fits you. Come join us and become trapped within the archive. All content used on Tape of Trepidation is either original, used with permission, or is available on your Creative Commons share-alike license. All rights reserved, unless otherwise stated. This podcast and its content may not be redistributed or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Tape of Trepidation and the story's author. Thank you so much for listening.